In mid-December 2025, during a joint annual press conference and direct address, President Vladimir Putin issued a statement that, although seemingly self-evident, held significant strategic implications. Russia requires its own wide-body aircraft, not as a prestige project or an abstract technological objective, but as a fundamental practical necessity. Wide-body aircraft serve as the foundation of long-haul transportation, international corridors, and a nation's capacity to demonstrate economic and logistical sovereignty. According to the President, the construction of such aircraft represents one of the most intricate industrial undertakings conceivable, necessitating extensive collaboration across advanced, technological sectors. Concurrently, he candidly acknowledged that unresolved issues persist. The Ministry of Industry and Trade reiterated this stance, emphasizing that a domestically produced wide-body aircraft is essential for both international transportation and for linking Russia's vast internal territory. Nevertheless, both statements utterly overlooked the most critical question, which specific aircraft will fulfill this role? In the quiet gap between aspiration and actuality, the resolution has gradually become inescapable. In January 2026, a government directive subtly yet definitively reoriented Russia's civil aviation trajectory. Funds previously designated for the development of a new wide-body long-range aircraft were officially reallocated to the modernization of existing programs, most notably the 2214 and the MC-21310. Although the total amount was comparatively modest, the symbolism was unmistakable. This was not a momentary accounting adjustment. It represented a formal recognition that the wide-body program had entered a hiatus phase. The decision essentially signified the conclusion of active research and development efforts on an entirely new wide-body aircraft within the medium term. It also reaffirmed a long-held suspicion among aviation experts. Russia presently lacks the industrial, technological, and financial capacity to simultaneously complete multiple aircraft families while also undertaking the development of a next-generation wide-body aircraft from the ground up. This delay does not signify surrender. It signifies the act of prioritization. And that prioritization inexorably reverts to the sole wide-body aircraft currently in Russia's possession. The Ilyushin Il-96 is often described as antiquated, a remnant of a bygone era. Nevertheless, this perception overlooks a crucial fact. The Il-96 has never ceased to exist. It persisted within production tools, design documentation, engineering knowledge, and organizational memory. While Western manufacturers swiftly advanced twin-engine efficiency and global supply chains, Russia maintained a resource arguably more valuable under current circumstances, a completely sovereign wide-body platform. The most recent variant, the Il-96-400M, is not a historical artifact. It features an elongated fuselage, advanced avionics, enhanced navigation systems, and upgraded onboard architecture. Its four PS-90A1 engines may not be the most fuel-efficient globally, but they are dependable, domestically manufactured, and well understood by Russian industry. Most notably, the aircraft is not merely a conceptual design, but a concrete, verifiable prototype. During a time when Russia's aviation industry must emphasize reliability over innovation, this holds greater significance than aerodynamic sophistication. For many years, the outlook for Russian wide-body aviation was linked to a completely new aircraft, often studied within the framework of international collaboration or advanced technological development. The expectation was that this aircraft would completely replace the Il-96, providing twin-engine efficiency, composite structures, and enhanced global competitiveness. However, expectations conflict with the principles of physics, metallurgy, and the passage of time. At the core of these plans is the PD-35 engine a power plant designed to provide propulsion in the 35 to 40 ton range, facilitating twin-engine wide-body configurations. In principle, this power plant would enable the development of a completely new category of Russian aircraft. In practical application, 
the PD-35 continues to serve as a technology demonstrator. The existing experimental units generate considerably less propulsion than necessary, and the materials required for continuous operation at the desired performance levels are not yet available in sufficient industrial quantities. The development of such an engine is not a matter of years, but rather decades. The estimated completion date around 2030 does not assure readiness. It represents an aspirational goal. And even if the engine were to be realized tomorrow, integrating it into an existing airframe would be considerably complex. There is a widespread misconception that the IL-96 400M can be readily re-engined with new power plants, thereby converting it into a modern twin-engine wide-body aircraft. In fact, this concept fails under rigorous engineering analysis. The PD-35 is considerably large in physical dimensions. Its diameter, mass, and length significantly surpass those of the PS-90A1. The installation of such engines necessitates a completely redesigned wing, modified pylons, reinforced structural components, extended landing gear, and adjusted ground clearance. Without these modifications, the engines would be positioned perilously close to the runway surface, risking debris ingestion and jeopardizing safety. By that time, the aircraft would cease to be classified as an IL-96 derivative. It would be a completely new aircraft bearing a historic name. The resources necessary for such a transformation would be comparable to those required for designing a new aircraft from scratch, the very endeavor that has now been formally halted. While Russia considers its future in wide-body aircraft, the global aviation industry continues to evolve dynamically. China's long-range wide-body aircraft is anticipated to begin service prior to the end of the decade. Western manufacturers persist in optimizing their platforms, leveraging extensive supply chains and decades of incremental advancements. This raises a significant strategic question. Why develop a late-entry aircraft that will encounter immediate competition when a viable alternative is already available? The response increasingly leans in support of the IL-96. Not due to its potential to dominate global markets, but because it consistently and independently meets Russia's internal requirements. President Putin's statements regarding wide-body aircraft extended beyond ordinary transportation considerations. They were concerned with industrial sovereignty. Aircraft programs do not constitute isolated engineering endeavors. Rather, they function as complex ecosystems. When manufacturing processes are halted, skills tend to deteriorate. When design bureaus decline in significance, knowledge becomes scattered. Restarting such ecosystems at a later stage is exponentially more difficult than sustaining them in a diminished yet active state. The IL-96 program sustains the vitality of this ecosystem. It encompasses extensive experience in wide-body assembly, large aircraft systems integration, certification expertise, and long-range operational proficiency. Even limited production maintains these capabilities in ways that no future rapid development effort could readily duplicate. In strategic terms, the IL-96 serves as a technological intermediary, not the ultimate objective, but the platform that enables Russia to attain it when circumstances are favorable. Another frequently neglected aspect is the IL-96's flexibility. Beyond civilian passenger transportation, the platform has demonstrated its suitability for specialized missions, government transportation, airborne command centers, and aircraft necessitating extensive internal space and substantial electrical power capacity. These roles require greater reliability, endurance, and customization than marginal fuel savings. In these missions, the IL-96 has no domestic equivalent and no viable foreign alternative by the early 2030s, Russia is likely to reconsider the development of a new wide-body aircraft, potentially equipped with advanced next-generation engines and supported by a stable industrial capacity. However, until that moment occurs, there is no substitute prepared to take its place. 
The pause of new wide-body development, the reallocation of funds, the ongoing engine challenges, and the realities of global competition all lead to the same conclusion. The latest variants of the Il-96 will remain Russia's primary wide-body aircraft for the foreseeable future. Not because they embody the apex of contemporary aerospace engineering, but because they are tangible, autonomous, and attainable. In aviation, as in strategic planning, survival frequently hinges not on the ideal solution, but on the one that is practically available. If you liked the video, please subscribe, share, and like. Also, please take the memberships to encourage us.